Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Write or Die show. I'm your host, Randy Lee Bosla. On the show, we interview other writers and we talk about mental health from their personal journeys. If you have not already hit that like and subscribe button, go ahead, do that now so that you never miss an episode. Today with us, we have Lieutenant Colonel Jason Pike. Hello. Hello, Randy. It's great to be here on your show. Excellent. And where are you joining us from? Well, uh, I am in the travel mode right now. I'm out of Atlanta, Georgia, uh, but I live in San Antonio, Texas, but I'm going to some veterans events in South Carolina right now. So yeah. Very nice. I love traveling. Yes, I, I do too. I find that this, I don't know, this is just based on everybody that I've talked to. Americans travel throughout America a lot more than us Canadians travel throughout Canada. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't it's, even know you were from Canada. I, I am. <laughs> I am from Canada. Okay. Um, yeah, I lived. I live super close to the to the border. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm like almost American. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, from all the different people that I've talked to, Canadians tend to travel outside of Canada, whereas Americans, not that you guys don't, but you travel within the states a lot more than we travel within Canada. Yeah, I, I just know that a lot of uh, Americans do not have passports, so I don't. I'm not sure if they go out of the United States as much as other countries. So I don't. Know. That would be that. Okay. See now, now I have solved my conundrum. Not that I was overly concerned, but now I've solved it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. All right. So tell us a little bit about who you are. I'm, I'm an author of a book. I'm a combat veteran of 31 years in the United States Army, and I've served, oh, I've served nine years overseas outside of America, uh, Canada, but South Korea, El Salvador, Germany, Afghanistan, and some other countries I can't talk about, but uh, <laughs> I've, <laughs> so yeah, uh, it, and I've, uh, a book uh, that I have is A Soldier Against All Odds, uh, A Soldier Against All Odds, and uh, promoting the book and getting stories out, a uh, very true uh, nonfiction book uh, out, and uh, my first book, and uh, yeah, that's kind of what I'm doing, yeah. Okay, well, that's what you're doing, but that's not who you are. Who are you? Who, who Told I you this am. is the hardest question of the whole thing. Who I am. <laughs> I am a veteran. I am a father. I'm a husband. Uh, and so, yes, that's who I am. Okay, how many uh, kids? I, now I'm I've being nosy. One, one child. She's 22. She just graduated from Texas A&M University. <laughs> With, with honors and mechanical engineering so oh that's a that's a high-end yeah. thing to me like so, very technical uh, yeah yeah very technical and uh m- much opposite than me I was in education uh she was in engineering so uh so yeah that's kind of what I did and I'm a veteran of uh, for 31 years and yeah. that's kind of who I am uh for All the most right. part yeah okay okay any mm-hmm. pets I got a dog well I got two dogs I got a white I got a little Half breed hound type of a dog, and then I've got a little Mexican Chihuahua dog. And, uh, yeah, I got two dogs that are uh, yeah that we manage uh, in the, in Texas. Yeah. Aww. Yeah. See, now that's who you are. That's <laughs> you know the root of the person. Do you have kids? Do you have pets? That's that's mm-hmm. what we want to know. Um, oh, yeah. And I guess I guess we want to know about mental health. <laughs> so let's talk about that you start your story wherever makes the most sense and uh, i'll just randomly interject okay i well i mean the the meat uh, when I, I saw your show called write or die and i thought writing almost killed me and uh that's in my testimony of my book uh, on the first page you'll see where the book nearly killed me um my God. and a soldier against all odds so I am the author, I'm the narrator, but ride or die, I went to the hospital in February 2021 uh, in the beginning of this book when I saw my life put out on paper, and I'm not a, I am a writer, I'm an author, I guess, right, but the thing is, is I failed the first grade, writing, reading and writing are my worst subjects, believe it or not, 
identified by professionals. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I'm just not saying it. And uh, it's in the book. And uh, I wanted to get stories out uh, of, of my life in uniform. And this thing, I had a lot of flashbacks. I was sitting down a lot too much more than I usually do behind mm-hmm. a computer. And that nearly the blood clots formed in my lungs and my legs and uh, developed pneumonia. Uh, at the time, everyone was thinking that I was a smoker at the, when I was about to die, I, ICU in the intensive care unit. And I says, no, but I've been going under, I've been sitting a lot. I haven't been exercising. I've been sitting and the blood clots formed. And uh, I was scheduled. We had the obituary uh, put together and we had uh, end of life activities. Uh, that was uh, nearly. Oh, wow. Time. Like you were, you were dying, 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 dying. They, they, yeah, they said, this is not a good situation and you don't want to, you, you want to sign the DNR, the do not resuscitate order. Uh, the, and so, uh, and that's what, that's what was pretty much on the plate, what I was looking at. And I was in the ICU for th- intensive care unit for three days. And I came out of that because my body just ma- it responded uh, to uh, their heparin blood thinner and, and to the IVs and to the antibiotics. And then I went into a regular hospital for another two days and I was able to get wheelchaired out of there. But no, uh, and then after that, I never sat down. I, I, I'm sitting down now, but I, I, I stood up most of the time. I'm standing up at yeah. a desk because I don't want to sit down, but I, I am on blood thinners, but no writing. Uh, that's what your show. It, uh, that's what caught my attention. Is I. I that's in my testimony. I, I nearly died doing this, and they kept asking me. I said, "I'm not a smoker, but I'm sitting down uh, for long hours, stressing out, and having flashbacks on this damn book." So that's what nearly killed me. Yeah. Oh my gosh! So, <laughs> so the the title, and I've said this before on the show. The title, "Write or Die," was because writing saved my life. So you're like the complete opposite <laughs> well it it, it it did do you know cathartic behavior in other words there's, there's a lot of things i got over uh that way yeah i see that way uh there uh, it took time though it took some time For and sure. uh but uh but no writing uh in the beginning stages nearly killed me and uh but then later on the cathartic uh things uh, you'll see it in this show here you'll yeah. see how i'm relieved uh I, I can do this much better than sitting down trying to figure out a <laughs> noun or a plural or a verb oh, or whatever right so uh, but no i had a lot of help in my book just like most writers do they have help help behind the scenes that you yeah we, we don't that. we don't live in a vacuum we don't do it by <laughs> ourselves um we definitely have you know beta readers helpers with editing some helpers with titles of things sometimes like we we're not alone Mm -hmm. um okay so you talked about flashbacks so how how did they happen for you so you're writing along and then Mm -hmm. how how do they feel because you know if you've never experienced a flashback it can be like "Hmm, I don't know a flashback it really occurred uh they would happen in dreams before the book but or I'd have bad dreams or I would just have memories bad memories but when I saw it written out on a sheet of paper, then the story, how the story developed, and I'm thinking, oh, God, am I really worthy of doing this? Am I going to have to come clean? I'm, vul- I'm going to be vulnerable. And then look at this. Look what I've done. I can't believe I've done it. And then I would, I would be literally scared of the book some many times I would have anxiety I've had anxiety attacks on the book but the the dying phase was much worse but it was the the it would just be reliving it it would be going back and then feeling that uh I, I'm not good enough and I would I'd feel uh very vul- like I'm vulnerable it's right here on a sheet of paper and now I'm gonna am I really good enough to put this thing out here and to have a competitive book that someone will actually look at and love it but uh no uh, that's how those flashbacks with memories and just I, one paragraph would just set me off or sometimes I would have to leave the computer and not even look at the manuscript for more than a week. Uh, there was times when I went into a laughing phase that was just, and I couldn't, even if I knew how to write, the emotional aspects of it were just very difficult to get through. And my, mm-hmm. my ghostwriter would say, can you review this three pages? And I'm thinking, I can't, I can't, I can't do that. I mean, even though it was my life, it's just really difficult. I'd have to say what, you know, yeah. I need help. I need help on this. And yeah. so uh, that's kind of how that happened. Yeah. yeah. I totally feel you on that. So I've written a bunch of nonfictions about my life and some parts of it are so heavy that same, I have to be like, no, I need a break. I got to walk away. I've, I'd be like heart racing, like, oh my goodness, this, this happened. Um, 
I don't think to the same extent as yours. I think yours is much more than mine, but we don't judge on this show and we don't compare on this show. <laughs> um, so I, I understand to, to an extent, you know, that anxiety and needing to step away and be like, I can't look at this. I can't review it right now. I need to just rest. And that's why for me anyways, that's why I, after I've written a heavy book or when I'm like, Hey, I need a serious break. I do like kids books. <laughs> that's been my <laughs> trick. And that's why I've got kids books out because I'm like, Oh, that was too heavy. I'm going to write about a cat. <laughs> <laughs> It works. It works for me. So yeah. if anybody else needs that tip and okay. run with it. Okay, cool. Yeah. So what would you do to deal like other than walking away, what were, would you do to cope with those moments of extreme anxiety or the, the flashbacks? Just leave it alone, not even look at it for more than a week. Um, of course, exercise and, uh, and it was, that was hard to do because I am a go getter meaning I want to knock this thing out. I, I'm a military, military, they want to knock things out. They want a timeline. But if you're a creator, which I guess I'm a creator. You're a creator you are now. <laughs> you're, you're creating something and it doesn't work that way. And uh, you can't go on a timeline and you can't say, hey, I got it. But uh, I want it this done and this done and this done. It don't, it's a flow of material that don't. And so I'm combating my own instinct of 31 years in the military of, like we got to have a timeline, we got to have a schedule and we got to, but it doesn't work that way. I've, I've learned that the hard way. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And even when I'm like, Hey, I want this book to be out on say six months from now, say, say I'm like almost finished. I'm like, Hey, I'm going to give myself a deadline. I find at least with the nonfiction genre for me, that doesn't work because I never know when something heavy is going to hit and force me to take that break. And then, you know, I've lost, I've lost a week of writing or whatever, where really it's changing the way that we think about that. It's not that we've lost a week. It's that we have maintained our health and it's okay that it's not done by the, that exact deadline. Um, so, you know, sometimes we got to change our thinking around that, which it's, it's struggle all on its own. Yes, it's a very big struggle. I burned myself out uh, a few times. My ghostwriter, who is the, you know, he is the architect, he, he, he almost got burned out as well. Um, and it took a part of him as well. So uh, we, we, and we had even other people behind the scenes doing the little technicalities of things. I did the audio book myself as well, but with the other help, I am the author and the narrator of it. And uh, they, I guess a lot of people on here might be want to be writers, but the audio book, when I went through it, it, it developed, I came out with more stories. I came out with, of course, all true stories. I, that the, the reading it, and I've read it over a thousand times, take 10, take 20, take 10. I, that developed and I said oh I forgot about this I forgot about that I forgot about this that that went into those theme lines and then that poured out even more so it was a process over the years of just squeezing out a lemon and just getting the juice out on a very painful scale because a lot of people think well I don't remember this and I don't remember that no one take I don't think many people take notes of their entire life right. but if you do if you worked at it and you worked at it and that's what you did for a period of years You'd be, you'd be amazed at what uh, things you remember uh, <laughs> over the years to, by just going and work, having someone work with you uh, on, on mm -hmm. questioning the various details. Yes, that, that's a really good point. And that's what I, so whenever I, I think that I'm kind of like finished my book and I send it to somebody who doesn't know my life story at all. And they're like, um, how do we get from this point to that point? I think, I think you missed this big chunk. And I'm like, oh, it just makes sense to me because we've lived it. So mm -hmm. it's so nice when somebody comes, well, I mean, nice in a sense, because you can fill that gap, but then we got to think again. <laughs> and that, that's a whole other issue, but that's okay. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard. So, very difficult. So um, what have you been doing um, to just kind of help manage your mental health? Because you were saying, you know, bef even before writing the book, you would have nightmares. And that is, that's very common in traumatic instances. Well, very common with, I, know, I don't know if you've been actually diagnosed with PTSD, but that's a very common, mm -hmm. yeah, right. it's very common theme in that diagnosis. So how were you dealing with those? Were you dealing with those? Mm -hmm. Sure was. Post-traumatic stress, post-traumatic growth. Uh, 
Yeah. So when I got out of the service, I went through a series of counselings and various activities to find out what is the best uh, flavor for me to handle this stuff. And I just found out it was, you know, diet and exercise and managing is management of, 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 of the trauma. Um, mm -hmm. For me, bike riding, nature, mm -hmm. dogs, um, being alone, but not alone too much, getting, you know, gathering. And so I would, I would work on that uh, sleep, uh, working on sleep with the nightmares. I, I don't, I don't believe in drugs, but the only drug I do take would be something called Ambien. It's a sleep medication okay. that, 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 not, that not just helps with me on the uh, sleep, but it's the dream. It reduces the dreams. And I, I didn't know that until a doctor told me that. And so I'll take some of that and I just a management, tip, but uh, really I've taken a lot of series of drugs, but most of them I don't get along with. And mm -hmm. I, I think it's more or less management and doing things uh, outside, uh, getting away from the computer and devices and things of that nature helps me out a good bit. Um, but no, uh, there is no magic bullet, uh, but, but there is a menu of uh, what type of bullets you might want to handle. Uh, there's a menu and a lot of people don't want to go and have to try the different men, the different items on the menu, but there is other things, yoga, meditation. Nice. Um, for me, uh, which I might do right after this show is I have a, there's a sauna and then there's an ice bath. And so I'll oh. go to the sauna, stretch in the sauna, get all sweaty. And then I'll go to an ice bath. If you don't have an ice bath, you can go to a cold shower. A lot of gyms have saunas, but that's just me. It, yeah. and so, and I just learned this by accident that this hot cold therapy uh really does well um so uh, hmm. elliptical an elliptical a left right left process of just getting away from the not really listening to the music or on your devices but trying to relive memories and allow your emotions to come out through exercise that helped me out a whole lot uh with yeah. grief and things of that nature so um like I said, you might want to play around with the menu and taste a few different items on that menu to find out what's best for you. Yeah. I like that. You know what? You're the first person to, to say about this a hot, cold thing. Personally, I couldn't do it because cold literally hurts. Um, but you know what? That is that is an interesting thing to try because I know um, it's one of the techniques that a therapist has told my kid, not, not the hot part than the cold but putting his face in like a bowl of ice water and just putting the face in when he's having like a moment has been one of the techniques they've given it doesn't really work for him because when he's in one of those moments he doesn't have the capacity to stop and then go get an ice bowl um but doing that whole gets the hot especially when, when you mentioned you know doing the stretching and, and all that part there too and then going to the ice that's very interesting I don't know the science behind it. I just know that um, in many countries, I know South Korea, I know other European countries, they do this. I've lived in many country, uh, many places around the world. It is very common over there. Um, I, 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 when you sweat, I guess the, the vessels um, go out. And then I guess when you get into a cold water, they go back in, mm -hmm. I get to a point of a shivering state. I know it can be painful and it was painful in the beginning, but now I'm getting more and more used to it. Um, I always did the sauna and I always felt good after the sauna, but yeah. then I haven't done the ice part or I've only been doing that for the past year. And I felt that's even better. I know it's yeah. painful in the beginning, but you have a tendency to uh, you know, get used to it. I think the Indians, the American Indians used to do some of this stuff after a war or after a, they would go into a teepee. They would have a lot of stones, hot stones. It would, they would create their own sauna and then uh, have everything come out of them. It's like getting all the toxins and all the things. Mm -hmm. And then they would go into the cold water or some whatever type of uh, uh, cold or just out into the snow. And uh, but no, I've, I've, I feel really good on doing stuff like that. I, I really enjoy that. Oh, that's kind of neat. Yeah. I'll have to keep that in mind. I don't know if I'll ever go for it because old um but i do like having the knowledge of lots of different techniques that's what this show is all about mm -hmm. um very cool so have you um to help deal with with all of that stuff did you go to therapy at all or just kind of stuck to your coping strategies that you mentioned? um at the beginning i went through various counseling sessions there was something called emdr i don't yes. know what it it's a tapping or it's a yes. left, right, less processing mechanism. And then they'll get you into an emotional stage 
to get you out, let the things flow out. That helped out. I mean, I've been to the floor crying in a counselor's office with EMDR. Ah, just ah, ah. So I've been on the floor of a counselor's office with EMDR technique. Okay. Um, and uh, that that helped a little. That helped a little. I would say that's okay. And now, now going to EMDR, that left, right, left uh, process, that pro, that um, you can, you know, walking is a left, right, left. Running is left. Elliptical is a left, right, left. And then, and if you allow yourself to try to relive things while you're doing that, you could you could possibly do it on your own through accident hmm. if you just go into that memory stage and allow it to come out. If you need a counselor to help you guide it, the, that therapy is um, available as well. Um, you know, there's yoga, meditation, there's all these other things that uh, didn't work for me, but it works for other folks. Um, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, yeah, that's, so I think that, I think a lot of folks, uh, there's a whole menu of things out there, but a lot of people may not taste them or may want them. Some people are into bike riding or fly fishing or just what have you to get away. If you're walking in nature and you're walking a dog and you hear the part and you're getting away from your devices, that's a, that's a therapy. Dogs and animals are, a lot, are very much, we all know about that. But. I always say the dog. That's why I always ask when, if people have pets mm -hmm. because pets all on their own are so therapeutic. Mm -hmm. Yes, they are very much. Just they're watching them, their behavior and how they respond to you um, non-verbally is just, I can pick it up uh, really, really well and uh, mm -hmm. very lovable animals, very yeah. much so, yeah. My dog, just total side note has nothing to do with anything other than this is a funny story about my dog. Um, so recently we moved the exercise bike, the like stationary bike into my bedroom because I wanted it pointed at the window because I wanted to be able to look outside while I did it. My dogs sleep, all, all my dogs sleep with me. So I open up the door to go in and the puppy, and I say puppy because he's only a year and a half, but he is a German shepherd mixed with a little bit of husky. He is 92 pounds. Like he's not a small dog. Okay. He is scared of this elliptical bike that we just put in my room <laughs> and he's barking at it and he's doing that cute little puppy head tilt. And he's like, and like barking at it. Like it's some, and I had to go into my room past him and I'm like, look, mom can touch it. And I'm like touching the bike. I'm like, look, I'm touching it. It's fine. Mm -hmm. It's totally fine. You can come in. And then he like mm -hmm. runs super past it onto the bed and he's still looking at it. Like, what is that thing? <laughs> <laughs> so, just, just a totally off, off topic story, <laughs> but it was just so funny. Um, if you follow my pets on their TikTok at four cats, three dogs, um, I will be posting a little clip of that. Cause I, I, last night I did, I was like, as he's doing, I'm like, okay. Hey, I need to get this on tape because this is hilarious. Mm. Um, because it's been now two nights in a row that that he's mm. like freaked out. This bike. It's, it's just think fun. You, you might be getting used to it after a little while. You will, which is why you know the first night I tried just to get him used to it, and the second night I'm like, okay, hey, I'm taping it this time. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> um. Anyways, so what piece of wisdom would you give somebody who is listening right now that is maybe experiencing some? some of their own say traumatic nightmares reoccurring Ooh, um with nightmares uh, reoccurring uh wow i don't know it's it is um i think you probably need to get to a, a counselor to get some advice on that i think uh, i am not an expert in it i do know i've had them for years um and uh i know that <laughs> one counselor told me to write that when you wake up from the just write down write down the um you know, write down all the details of that nightmare and then try to form some sort of, I don't know, storyline with it to give to the therapist. Uh, but for me, uh, it's just happened so many times that uh, I just thought that Ambien did pretty well. It's going to continue on. I don't know the magic bullet on that. I, I, I think that Ambien does help me out, but it may not help another person out. They may have other things out there that, but see, a lot of folks don't want to go and see somebody or try to experiment with other things. So that might be something you can look at in the future. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Um, so now your book, you, you've kind of mentioned it a little bit, you've showed us the cover, but let's talk about it a little bit more. So it is your nonfiction um, and you should show us the cover again, the title again. It's A Soldier Against All Odds. A and is Soldier. that a picture of you on the cover? 
So that's me when I'm 17 years old. Oh my. Um, and that's me right here when I'm 45 in Afghanistan. Wow. So, and so this was me when I was 17. And uh, I was at Fort Sill, Oklahoma in 1983. I, I wasn't got- even born yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so uh, the, there are stories in here that are just very wicked. And this is a different type of a book where even though I'm a, I became a senior manager in the military, I'm going to tell you my ups and downs of life. Uh, I'm not going to tell you I conquered the uh, Afghanistan or the war or anything like that. I'm going to tell you my failures and fiascos and to give you some sort of inspiration of hope, uh, survival of a never quit. I, you know, I I was less than best, even though I I have a lot of awards. I did really well, but I came from, you know, I came from the bottom in multiple ways, not just from rank and joining, uh, but from academic Uh, difficulties and from going to a junior college instead of a you know I had to go in at the bottom of a community college and then work myself through Um, I've got three college degrees but I think all you and yourself and your viewers can do much better on any standardized test than me hands down is what I feel but uh, I I think that when you look at this you'll see (laughs) that that um that I was less than best but I just made it through persistence and planning and survival you know Oh, that's a very inspirational book. Yes, no doubt. That's no doubt. And it's oh. it's a funny book. I, I'm not coming across as a victim. I'm not a victim, even though there was some, you know, we all have our, but I come across as more of a survivor of the most part. Yeah. So. Okay. Excellent. And where do we get a hold of this book? So I'm on social media, but I'm on a, I have, we got a website, jasonpike.org, jasonpike.org. Um, the book is on Amazon self-published a soldier against all odds you can get it on amazon a soldier against all odds but within social media i'm connected to the website jasonpike.org and uh yeah that's where you can get a hold of it i am the author the narrator as well and so i was gonna say so is it on audible as well it's on audible as well yeah and so uh a lot of the reviews i've got over 100 reviews on amazon and a lot of them are my soldiers and things and you could probably just look at the reviews and be entertained (laughs) <laughs> about the book, right without even reading the book uh, but, but, but no, please go and read the book <laughs> yeah, please go and read the book and, and what I really need is reviews I'm and, and and so the reviews really help me out but uh but no I uh the 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 difficulty part uh, you said it was being vulnerable and showing uh that I ain't perfect at all matter of fact I've had a lot of issues over the years but I am successful overall um because of just staying in the game staying you know, and, but now you're seeing myself relieved from the book and from uh, doing all this work. <laughs> so, yeah. Excellent. All right. So everybody make sure you go and pick up the book. Um, title one more time, A Soldier. A Soldier Against, against All Odds. A Soldier. It's the blue book and it is an easy read. It's an easy listen to. It's in the Southern, it's in a Southern dialect. It's in a raw form. In other words, uh, it ain't going to be something really detailed that, but so it's in a raw form that anybody, I feel that most people could pick it up and have a good read or listen to on their way, whatever. That, that's how I write too. I write like I talk. Um, obviously I clean it up because I talk like a crazy person. Um, but um, <laughs> I write the way I talk and I, some of the reviews I've gotten is like, it's like when you're reading the book, you're just sitting down for a conversation with the person. That's exactly what it is. That's exactly. Yes. I mean, some of the reviews said exactly that. In other words, Perf- this is yeah. like sitting down on a porch. Yeah. I like I like those kind of for for nonfiction style. I like that more. Like I'm getting the person instead of like an academic version of it. Yeah, and uh, yes, uh, even though I've got two master's degrees, I'm not an academic. I, any, I just, but no, this is really uh, more of a Southern, uh, just a homeboy type of a deal. Just like you're listening to me now, you're going to hear and, or feel the same types of emotions come out in this book. Yeah, just Perfect. Exactly. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, so you said you're on social media. So what social media should we be looking to follow you on? Well, um, I'm on Facebook, Amazon. LinkedIn. So I'm on those. Um, 
with my Facebook site, you'll, I have a book just dedicated to the Facebook site. You'll see a whole lot of various stories and things where I'm promoting the book through Facebook. Instagram, I just recently got on that, so I'm on there. But Facebook would be the big one uh, that you would see the book on. J, uh, Facebook, jasonpike.org. It would be connected to Facebook and, and to my website, jasonpike.org. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Perfect. So mm -hmm. thank you so much again for coming on the show, for sharing, um, and everybody go pick up the book or my favorite, just go listen to it. I, I love, yes. okay, I love, especially when it's a nonfiction, authors reading their own books for nonfiction. That's me. That's me. It's the best. I know. So I've got, I've got one of my books, uh, one of my nonfictions on Audible, Embracing Me. And I keep going, oh, I got to record the other ones. <laughs> I <laughs> it's haven't so, yet, but I got to do so it. It is so difficult. It is so difficult. It is so hard. Well, for, yeah. So uh, I'm creating another book. Nothing as crazy as this book. This book is, I mean, I'm creating something uh, veterans uh, for a veteran self-help guide. Okay. But I'm not gonna. I'm not. I'm, I'm not gonna kill myself on that one. But, no, uh, please that, don't. That's gonna be. <laughs> that's gonna be in the next year or two. But no, if you really want something, uh, that'll be more for veteran self help type of guy. How to get the veterans benefits? But no, no, no. Really, with this one, a soldier against all odds. This is the one I almost died from. And so, uh, yeah, this is the number one. <laughs> so. Excellent. All right. So thank you again so much for being on the show, and uh, good luck on this new venture that you're about to undertake. And yes, do not kill yourself for it. All right, Randy, you have a good day. As always, thank you so much for the amazing guests that we have on the show. Um, be sure to check out their links down in the description below. If you want to support the channel, go ahead and check out our merch store. We've got some very cool things on there. That's my favorite. Sorry, I'm busy ending the stigma. Um, but there's some other very cool designs. 10% of the proceeds always goes back to the Canadian Mental Health Association. Be sure to follow us on Facebook at RV Media because we have some great new shows coming up and you never want to miss any of those episodes. And remember, the only way to end the stigma of mental health is to speak openly and honestly. Bye!